you are here for Grow Beyond Posts and Pages. I am, it's going to be an introduction to the Pods framework, a content development framework for WordPress. I am Jim True. I am the support lead and community manager at the Pods framework. Uh, our website is pods.io and our Twitter is Pods framework. My website is jimtrue.com and my Twitter handle is jimtrue as well. Okay, so let's start our little story with you, about you, a WordPress developer. You've been building WordPress websites for a couple of clients, a personal trainer, a hairstylist and beauty expert, and a local artist, a sculptor that does like the most lifelike statuary you've ever seen. Uh, they have simple websites, pretty straightforward ones with a home page designed like a landing page with a call to action, an about page, a blog, and a simple contact form. Nothing special, stuff that you can do on the back end of WordPress with posts and, with posts and pages and a plugin like a contact form. Well, the trainer gives you a call today, Hercules, and he lets you know that he's bought a gym and he's hired a bunch of trainers and they're going to start offering classes uh, to the public so they need to be able to show what classes are offered and what trainers teach those classes and kind of like a schedule grid to show when those classes are offered and that's what they're really going to be using as their money making effort is the schedule grid because that's where people see that they go okay I want to go take a class and sign up. Well the beauty expert Aphrodite gives you a call and she's all excited because she's partnered with her her best friend Narcissus and together they're opening up a full service salon and spa. They've hired several stylists uh, massage therapists and spa uh, personnel and they have a full menu of services that they want to show on the website with prices and uh, details of the services of which staff members are offering each service. And uh, the artist is opening a gallery, uh, the sculptor Medusa, she drops you an email and lets you know she's gained the patronage of the muses and they've been secured a gallery to show off her lifelike statuary and she's going to start featuring other artists and their work and she wants you to add artist bios and galleries to the website and she wants to incorporate an event calendar and have the event calendar link off to the artists that are showing that week and some of the work they're doing. So what's your first impulse when you run into that kind of a question that comes to you? You usually are going to go say let's go find a theme. You're going to go start searching for a theme designed for gyms or searching for a theme designed for you know salons or art galleries. You might look for a plugin uh, to handle the event calendar, but first you're going to be thinking about redoing the entire website to incorporate it into this new theme that we're going to go shopping for. Well, what if that's the wrong question? What we should be asking is, what content do I need to manage? We've already designed the wireframes. We've already you saw them on the prior slides. Uh, all we really need to do is a way to have, uh, all we really need is a way to input and manage those different content types and some way to display them in the website and the existing theme. What if we had a simple way to create multiple types of content that your users could input on the back end and have that content display in multiple different ways on the front end? You could actually add a trainer and have his information automatically populate onto the bio, onto the trainer page, into the classes that the trainer teaches, and also on the schedule grid. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, pods to the rescue. Ah, no, 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 no. You can manage all of your content in one place with pods. Uh, we have a very simple uh, back-end GUI for actually creating the content, adding fields to it, and then it shows up in your back-end admin like normal. Now, you guys might know that we're talking about custom post types and taxonomies. So, Pods lets you create any kind of content anywhere in WordPress without code. What I've got here is uh, the different types of content that can be created and also the little WordPress codex uh, code that would be used to actually register that if you wanted to. But Pods does all that on the back end automatically for you, so you don't have to actually write register post type or register taxonomy or register meta. It allows you to create custom post types, custom taxonomies, custom fields, and add them to any of those. Uh, you can create custom settings pages. Yeah. So how does how does Pods integrate with WordPress? Is it like an API feed or it's a plugin? Platform? It's a plugin. We'll it's be plugin. showing you. Yeah, okay. it'll be kind of showing you as we go through it. It does have its own API that you can access through PHP, and we also connect in with the REST API as well. Uh, you can also extend WordPress objects, so you can take users and extend it and add fields to it. 
You can uh, do the same thing with post pages, menus, and media. You can take other existing custom post types and taxonomies created by other plugins and extend those as well. So like for WooCommerce, you could add additional fields to the products or the product categories. You could add, uh, like for the event calendar, you could modify the events, the venues, and organizers, and just pretty much anything else. We also allow you to connect anything with relationships, like with our former example of trainers, classes, and schedules. Hercules teaches bodybuilding on Thursday mornings, and that's an actual relationship connection going on there. We also allow you to display content in your theme without code. I've got a big asterisk up there. It says HTML and CSS, yes, but you should know those. <laughs> but this uh, little method is basically you create little content blocks that have like mail merge fields, and you can use those throughout the theme. You can feed a loop through it, and it automatically outputs the content where you want it to be. That works on single post types, uh, single post detail, archives. You can work them, you can add them anywhere you want with short codes, widgets, and auto templates. And we'll talk about most of this tonight. Our process with working with pods uh, that we'll be covering tonight is you start by planning out your content, you create it with pods, you populate it, and then end up to the back end, and then you prototype it using pods templates. We're not going to be going over any of the PHP stuff, but you can do pretty much anything that you can normally do with a theme with PHP, you can do with pods, because it still works the WordPress way. So what we're going to talk about tonight is planning before you build. We'll look at the wireframes we've designed, and we're going to figure out what types of content to create, what fields to add to that content, and where the connections need to be added. So let's start with our salon and spa first. Right off the bat, you know based on the simple wireframes we came up with that we're going to need to manage staff and services. Well, for your staff, you're probably going to want to have a photo of the staff member, their full name, their biography, a phone number, and an email. And uh, in this case, for staff, we're also going to be connecting it to the services that they do in your salon. So you put that underneath connections. For the services, all we really need is a service name, a description, and a price, and we want to know what staff member does it. So pretty straightforward. Let me show you how easy it is. First, we're going to start with installing pods. It's really easy. You go into your plugins, you click the Add New, you search for pods, brings up a list of all of our plugins. It's right there. Hit Install Now, it will install it. it may take a little while. Hit Activate, and it'll show up in your list of plugins like that. Also create a little area in the back end for Pods Admin, and that's where you can pretty much start adding your content. So let's go ahead and add our first content type. Now, <clears throat> we call them pods, but pods is just a word for a content type. In this case, what we're going to be actually doing is creating a custom post type, but this time we'll start with the staff. So for this one, you're going to create, click Create New, and it's going to give you the default of custom post type like posts or pages. Uh, staff is both singular and plural is the exact same word. So we're going to use that and hit next step and staff has been added. And you'll notice it's already over here in the admin. Just like that. So this is exactly the same thing that would happen if you registered a custom post type in WordPress. No difference whatsoever. It's just managed by pods. So now we really need to add um, fields to this because it has absolutely nothing in it right now. So before we add our fields, I want you guys to start thinking about the idea of when you work with WordPress, you want to use what WordPress gives you. When you register a custom post type with WordPress, it automatically gives you a, a title field and an editor. And you can also turn on the featured image. So we're going to use those for our staff name, their bio, and the staff photo. Now, these fields are actually called in WordPress the post title, the post content, and the post thumbnail. And these are referenced in pretty much every single theme out there to automatically display those things. So that's why you want to use what WordPress gives you in the content that you create. You're going to call it staff, but the theme will actually pick it up and actually automatically displays those three things. That's why we, we're going to, it saves us work later on down the road. So now we're going to add our fields to pods. And we're going to add the ones that are remaining, which is our email address and our phone number. So we're going to go into Pods Admin, Edit Pods. And in the staff, we're going to edit that. We're going to add a field. And the label, you want to do the human readable label. 
some phone number. It's going to automatically create a programmatic name. And then in the field type, you just go down and find the one that says phone. Pretty straightforward. We have a lot of different field types. I'm going to add another field uh, for email address. And it'll do the exact same thing. It'll automatically create the programmatic name. And we're going to select email, hit save field, and then ah, yeah, we're going to we need to get add the phone the featured image. So we're going to go down to the advanced options and select featured image under supports. And I want to be able to go view staff. So I'm going to enable the archive page as well. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we hit save pod, and there we go, our staff's back again. Okay, so now we're going to add a staff member. And it's pretty straightforward. You, your end users are going to be used to this. They're going to put the staff member's name, Aphrodite, her bio. Uh, they're going to drop a featured image in for her. And then down underneath this is two additional fields uh, where the phone number and email address are. And we're just going to punch those in. It's pretty straightforward. Your end users are going to be able to do this very easily. That was close. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And that's pretty much it. You hit update, and the staff has been added. And now, to view the staff member, you'll notice that when we click this, like she's all been added. So if we hit view staff, what you're going to see what is what the theme is going to prevent uh, provide us. And you'll see that it provided the title, her image, and her bio, but none of the custom fields are showing. And that's what we're going to do next. Well, actually, we're going to do a little bit more, and then we're going to uh, add our custom fields to the display portion. We're still in the building, podsing, and populating part. So now we're going to talk about relationships, or connecting pods with relationships. Let's start with our staff and services. Uh, based on the wireframe, we want to show a service list and show which staff members perform those services. So on our staff biography, we want to show what services the staff member performs. So we want to add a related services to staff. And that uh, each staff member can do multiple services, so that's going to be like a multiple selection. And for on the service side of the equation, I just flipped those two, didn't I? I didn't realize that. Sorry about that. <laughs> on the service side of the equation, multiple staff members can do multiple services. So again, you're going to be doing a multiple connection there. Uh, let's do another one just to, uh, to make this a little easier. We're going to talk about another relationship example between trainers, schedules, and classes. Um, our trainer can teach multiple classes. So it can teach boxing and running. Uh, and the classes can also be taught by multiple trainers. So that would actually be a many-to-many -many relationship there. But the problem is, is that our entire website is going to be driven by the schedule. So we actually want to drive our connections through the schedule. So we're going to actually change this, and we're going to make our, our schedule be the one that drives the connections to trainers and, and classes. So for the schedule, we're going to have a single select between schedule to trainers and schedule to classes. But obviously, it'll be a multiple select going the other direction. So the trainer can actually teach in multiple different blocks and can also teach multiple classes. So it's kind of very interesting, but it's like a one-to-many and a one-to-many, but it's a many-to-one and a many-to-one going those directions. So this will make more sense when we actually get into the back end of this. So, so to add related staff services, we're going to go back into our... I've actually created a post type called services that I did before you guys got in here. And uh, we're, we've already added price to it as a currency field. So we're going to add our relationship field now. You click Add Field, and again, we're going to do the label of Related Services. I tend to name my relationship field starting with like the word related so that I know it's connecting to something else. Uh, we're going to select from the list Relationship down at the very bottom, and it's going to automatically populate a little box here called Related To, and you can pick the other uh, post type out of the list. So we're relating it to staff. And uh, most of that is the primary piece you need to get done, but we still need to fill out the additional field options as well. Because now we need to tell uh, pods, is this a single select or a multiple select? By default, it's going to put it in as a single select with a checkbox field. But I'd like to have something a little more powerful than that. So I'm going to go into the additional field options on this one and click single, uh, where it says selection type. I'm going to change that to multiple select. So that this becomes a one uh, a many-to-many -many relationship. 
and I'm going to change the format to list view. And that allows us to basically add new relationships through other add new post types through the relationship back on the back end. So we hit save pod. And that is done. And now we'll show off how to add these related staff members. Any questions before I continue on? Because I know I'm talking I've said a lot for up to this point without no? Oh, yes. So you created a pod that last one was services. Services. Yeah. And then you related it to staff. Yeah. And we're starting there because I want to show you how it looks just going from one direction, and then we're going to talk about creating the connection going the other direction. So that because that's where the power of pods is, is that when you create a connection between two content types, you want to make sure that it's bidirectional so that if you add a staff member and you add a service for them, that service is automatically added on the back end and automatically connected, and, and vice versa. So to add a service with the related staff, we're now going to go into the staff screen, uh, which is right there. Oh, services screen, sorry. We're adding a service. So we're adding a haircut and giving it a nice little quick description, giving it a price, and selecting someone out of the list there, Miss Aphrodite, and hitting update or publish in this case. And you can see that she's been connected. Um, I don't believe this one. Yeah, I didn't do the connect back. So now we're going to talk about bidirectional relationships. I'm going to add that related service to our staff members pod. So we're going to go into the pods admin and go into the staff and add another field for related services. And this is where it gets kind of interesting because, again, related services, label the name automatically defaults. When you select the relationship in this case and actually select staff, it's going to recognize that there's a connection between the two. Like it has this whole little bidirectional field, and you'll notice you can select something. That points to the relationship field on the other side of the equation. And if you set it for multiple and do everything else like we normally do, it should work. But what that does is make the connection. And so just to be on the safe side, we also want to verify from the other direction. So I know that gets really confusing, but we've added related service to related staff, and now we're going to verify that related, service, related staff on the services post type has a connection going back to this one. So that's what we're verifying the bidirectional connection here. So we're going to go back into services and check that field. And it doesn't say bidirectional yet, but if we see it now, it does. If I hit update, it probably should. Yeah, it does. It says relationship bidirectional field. So now there is a connection between those two post types. And anything added on one side will automatically add on the other. Does that make sense? Which two post types? Uh, services and staff. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so now we show off the power of this. We're going to add services to staff bidirectionally. So we're going to go into our staff members and Aphrodite. We're going to check her out and notice that she's already got the haircut in there that we added from the service side of the, of the equation. So now I did that way too fast, but I click the Add New button and I'm adding in another service here. I'm adding BD Consulting for $45. And that automatically adds it to the list and I can add another one. And this is kind of the power of our pods list view relationships is that you don't have to make the person leave the screen they're working on to add the connection from the other side. So she's now got three completely different services added. Uh, and we could go into services, like see haircut, beauty consulting, and updos. If I go into services, all of those post types have been added. And if I look at one of those, beauty consulting is linked back to Aphrodite. So I can also add in Narcissus here as also doing this staff, this thing, and hit update, and it's going to make the connection going the other direction. So if I go back into staff and look at him, he's going to show that he has uh, beauty consulting now connected. And if I add another uh, service in here, which I'm going to do next, I'm, he's very uh, egocentric, so we're going to add advanced mirror watching as part of his little stuff, and it costs a lot of money for that one, 100 bucks. Add that in, hit update, and we're going to go back into services and look. He's got the two. We go back into services, and all of our services have been added. So it's very powerful because you've given your back end users a way to manage their content without having to go back and forth. So it's pretty cool. 
All right, so now we need to actually get it on the front end. We've added all these post types and we've shown the fact that in looking at them, all we see is the title, the picture, and the bio. So now we really want to make this content show up on the front end. So what? how many of you guys have ever done like a mail merge with uh, Word and Excel or something of that nature, like, you know, mail merge letters, where you have like a list that you want to automatically populate into a form letter? So that's kind of what we're doing. We're taking a list of these names and email addresses and populating them into a mail merge template. So in pods, what we're going to use is our post type of staff, and the pods template we're creating is going to pull in the post title and the email address into that little content block. So it's just like a mail merge, but in this case, it's actually called a pods template. And it allows us to basically reuse a little box of content in multiple places throughout the web, wherever, throughout our website, wherever we need it. Uh, and this is going to be a magic tag cheat sheet. That's what we call the little fields that pop in are magic tags. So the WordPress title is the post title. The WordPress content is the post underscore content. The WordPress featured image is the post thumbnail. A custom field that you create in pods, remember those little names that pop down from the label, that little programmatic name? like email underscore address or uh, phone underscore number. That's what that is, that custom field. So those are what those little guys are. The permalink, which is the link for the actual page on your website to that post, is permalink. The relationship connection is where it gets kind of confusing. Use related field dot field in the other pod. So if I'm using related staff member, or related staff, I'm going to go related staff dot post title, and that'll give me Aphrodite's name. Or related staff dot email address, and give me her email address. Make sense? And the related record permalink is related field dot permalink. So, we're going to start prototyping with a shortcut. I'm going to show you how easy it is to get content on a page using pods. It's not going to be pretty, but at least it shows you how it works. So we're going to add a new page, we're going to call it staff list, we're going to go into the pod short code button and display a list of multiple pod items. Select staff from the pod and right here we're just going to put post title and a card carriage return break. I'm going to put negative one, it's not required, but if you don't put that it'll stop at the number of posts that your website shows. So when you hit update you get a list of Aphrodite and Narcissus, it's very ugly staff list, but at least it works. And the whole concept is, is that that little, that little box, that little thing that says custom template, that's that section in between pods named staff and pods. So this right here is a custom template. That thing can be pulled out and put in the database in the thing we call pods templates so that those little pieces can be edited and used elsewhere. And you can, instead of going pods named staff limit and doing another little pods at the bottom, We'll just add a template equals in the name of that template. So we're going to create a pods template now. So we're going to go down to pods admin, uh, way at the bottom. Come on, mouse. Oh, first I'm going to show you off the fact that there's nothing there. <laughs> it's just the you know the, the list of staff is basically there. We're going to make basically add in our custom content into that. So we're going to pods template, add new, give it a name. In this case, staff detail. Uh, before typing something, well, I'm going to do a div at least, I think, and phone number. And then I'm going to select over here in the pod reference the actual post type. And this will allow me to see all the fields that I can pull into this pod's template. Uh, and if I start typing one, like phone number, it's actually going to automatically complete it for me. So it'll match it. And I'm going to do phone number, and I'm going to do email address. And then hit save. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I definitely need to write the content for this piece <laughs> to fill in the blanks. We'll hit update and it'll save it. Yeah. Any questions while I'm before I continue on? Because I'm going to show you now how to make that show. Can explain that pause reference or not, right? Yeah, the pause reference is basically going to pull in every single field that exists in WP Posts, which is your post type. It's also going to pull in any additional fields you added through pods. It's also going to create the connection over to the related staff. So you'll see that in a minute when we actually add that piece in next. But, I'm gonna, but the list, 
This is for people to choose from. Yes. Yeah. It's a reference. It's a reference. It's a reference. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual template being saved. So if you select staff or you can like move the little staff member or the little post types around and change them, it won't matter. Uh, it doesn't get saved with the, post, with the template. So it's basically just a reference. Now, <clears throat> we're going to show off the power of pods because single post types have automatically WordPress every single post type automatically will display a single post type detail. We showed that when we went to view Aphrodite and it automatically showed her thumbnail, her title, and her bio. That is called the single post type display. Every theme will automatically do that if they're programmed properly with WordPress. So we're going to take advantage of that is what we're going to do. We're going to use the content block within the theme to display our custom content. And that's what we're going to use with our auto templates. We're going to use the auto template to look at the content filter, grab our pods template that we tell it to, and have it push it into the display for the theme. Does that make sense? Yes. It, it will when you see it, <laughs> if it doesn't make sense right now. But we have a thing called auto templates. You access it underneath the edit pod screen. And you can have the option of putting it before or after the content. We also have a box for replace, but a lot of people get confused there and they think they can design an entire pods template and it's going to completely replace everything output by the theme. But the problem is, is that it doesn't because the theme puts the title and the featured image and post meta and then they put a nice little box where the editor pops out. That's what we're replacing is just that box where the editor pops out. So that's why you want to think in terms of what does my theme automatically give me and then I want to enhance that with my custom content. You're never going to be able to replace the title and the featured image unless you turn those off inside your theme itself. So that's it's one of those things you have to get your brain around when you're working in it. So let's show you how to use auto templates. So we've now created our staff detail, a phone number and email address. We're going to go into edit pods and this is for the staff so we're going to go into the staff and edit them and you'll see the tab says auto template options we want to enable it for this pod we want to select single item view and I stupidly when I did this one the first time I put after and I realized that's going to put I'll put the bio and put this her information down at the bottom and that's not really where we want that this works on both single item view and archive view and I definitely did want that I realized it after I saved it that I did it wrong so I went back into the to before because I want that content to show up before. You hit the save pod and now if I go into the staff list and look at them, all of a sudden Narcissus now shows his phone number and his email address and the bio and Aphrodite's phone number and email address are also in there. Pretty straightforward. And that's at the archive view and if I click on the single post detail it's also there. So it's a way to get your custom content in without using code really. Make sense? Yeah. Now we get the complicated stuff. Uh, template tags and pods templates, they look like short codes, but they're not. They are a if then else display kind of loop. What they work for in pods are is like they look at the field and they say does this field have any content? If it doesn't have any content, I'm going to show the else instead or I'm going to skip it entirely. So you've got if field name, content, else, content, if. Uh, and we can also loop through related fields or taxonomy or, or database, uh, sorry, multiple images. So like if you added a multiple image field to pods, you could also loop through with each. So our each is what we use to loop through the related content on the other side of the connection. Does that make sense? So we're going to go each related field and then inside that little loop box, we're going to output content from the other side of the, of, the, of the post. So like in the case of our staff members, we want to show their services. So we're going to go if related service. So we want to see if does, she, does this person even have a related service. And if they do, then we're going to output an unordered list. And inside that unordered list, we're going to go each related service and output a post title for each one. Does that make sense? You're stepping over and grabbing data from the other side of the equation, from the other side of the connection. 
And if we'll use the else there and say no services found. This might make more sense when I show it to you. So that's what we're going to do now. Because we're going to take our existing staff detail. And this is, again, is also the power of being able to prototype. Because you can go into this template and keep editing it and fine tuning it and making it better each time you play with it. So that's what we're doing right now is like instead of having to go out and write a PHP file, upload it to the server, and do all that kind of stuff, I can just go back into the database, hit staff detail, and immediately check to see did it work like I wanted it to. So that's what we're prototyping now. So we're going to go back into staff detail and see it still has the phone number and email address. And now we're going to add an if plot. And it starts with if and the name of the field, in this case related service. And I'll show you in the reference down here, uh, you have page down a while, but that's where it is, related service. So we end that block, and then I'm going to start an unordered list here. So I always, when I do an ordered list, I always give them a class name that's kind of like similar to whatever that service is that I'm adding so that I can directly uh, style it. So then I'll start at each block, which also starts the same way, each related service. Now inside the each block, I'm going to do a list item, an anchor reference, and a post title. So the anchor reference in this case is permalink. Don't worry about the escape URL. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, post title and then the end of the anchor reference, the end of the list item, the end of the each. And then we finish off our unordered list with the slash UL. And I finish off my if tag. And then, of course, I save this. And I want to see what it looks like. So I go back to staff, and I go look at my staff list. And all of a sudden, you'll see I now have direct links to the services that both of those staff members perform. And that's from that little tiny template block we added. But, of course, there's a problem. I click on Beauty Consulting, and I haven't added a template yet for Beauty Consulting, so I don't, or for the services side of the house, so I don't have anything there. So now I have to add the template for the other side of the picture. That escape URL is basically when you've got an anchor reference, an href, you want to make sure that whatever you're pushing into that field has been escaped properly for a URL. It's a, it's a function from WordPress, and we just do it there just to make sure our content has been sanitized. So it's just good practice and honestly that one little line that li a href permalink post title a li that thing I cut and paste like a million times a day because I use that one particular thing all the time. Because most of the stuff you're going to be linking is going to be lists of related items output in some way. If that makes sense. So let's do adding a template to the staff. Do you, any questions? Because I, that's a lot of stuff I know. <laughs> You're terribly quiet. Okay. Inside uh, this one, we're going to go into the pods admin again. And we're going to go to templates. And we're going to add a new template for services detail. And we're pretty much going to do the exact same thing we did at the staff side. The only difference is, is it's going to be, I need to put in the price. So I need to output that little bit. And then I need to create the exact same little block, only this time I'm going to say related staff instead of related service. And that's pretty much what this whole little block is going to do. This whole if, ul, each, L A or li, a, li, and ul, and all that stuff, this is going to be pretty much a constant code snippet you're always going to use. Because you can do the exact same thing with uh, looping through a taxonomy. You can do the exact same thing when looping through uh, a, a list of images and stuff like that. And they all work kind of the same way. Have I lost anybody before I could save here? Not that this thing is waiting for anybody. So we go into staff, we go into the auto templates here. And this is an interesting one. I made a mistake when I did this one, but I'm doing the service detail before and the archive view staff uh, service detail and before. And when I hit save this time, I realized that I did not create, I didn't enable archives for this particular post type. So it tells me that. It says you didn't archive, you didn't enable archive view. So go into the advanced options and go down to enable archive page. And I'm giving this one a slug of services. A service is, a singular service is service, and then a, a plural service is services. So. 
And most of you folks have probably never had to deal with a lot of this. We go to services and we view them, and now all of a sudden we have all of our services listed with their price and the staff members that do them. Like magic. And we have our connections going back and forth. So we pretty much handled everything the client asked for in about 20 minutes. So not bad. Now we just have to style it and make it look pretty. You wanted a little that said, that said. Talk about that. Because <laughs> we're using Staff what we're Staff members who provide this service, a little heading. Like oh, you can just add that inside the template. Like right before, like where your unordered list is, you would just add that in inside that block. Because that would be inside the if block. Because the if you think along the lines, the content block gets passed through once for every uh, record that's going through it. In this case, we're on the um, the staff detail or the staff archive list. So the staff archive going through that is going to go through the staff template for once for every staff member. But when it hits the each block, it's going to loop through the related services. Does that make sense? Here, I'm getting like dead stares. Okay, question time. Because <laughs> I knew I was going to go. Dead stuff? Come on. <laughs> I've, I can show more demos. We have plenty of time. We're at like 7 Eleven, so I can definitely get some stuff in here. I'm like, you guys are like dead, dead to the world, aren't you? I mean, I don't have any questions, really. I mean, Did it make sense? It did make sense. I missed a few chunks, but it's all made sense. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, the whole idea is, is that you can manage your content pretty straightforwardly with pods. And connecting stuff is, uh, most people are used to taxonomies, but taxonomies work a completely different way. Taxonomies are used to, like, group and filter stuff. Connections mean direct connections. It's like, you know, I'm an author, and I wrote 17 books. I want to have an author page, and I want to have my 17 books listed. For like the staff list with the uh, services, the same type of thing. You want to show the services and the staff members. So this makes it really easy for your end users to add content to because they're not having to go in and tell you, I need to add 17 staff members. They can go into staff and just add them. And it will automatically show up whatever design that you have applied to the theme for those pages. And with all the already like pertinent information mm -hmm. with that. So exactly. And if you want to do uh, different lists, like if you want to show, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Like when I'm trying to visualize, like I'm across, like like in the restaurant, I'm trying to take all of our checkout lists and make it digital, mm -hmm. to where the manager and the individual can walk around with the tablet and just check out their checkout list. Yeah. And this would be useful because then because I saw your staff page. Yeah. That'd be nice if like every employee almost had their own page with their checkout list. They could. That the individual can go to and click well, to it. And you can link them in through the uh, the user objects. So you can actually you can enhance user objects and add related checklists to that. So you can create checklists and relate them to the user. So when the user logs in, you can filter a checklist based on the user who's currently logged in. Right. So and we have a thing called special magic tags that allow you to basically do like you could have a short code that says uh, give me the checklist for the currently logged in user. You know where uh, the ID of the check you know is equal to user got ID or something. I can walk you through that one. It's they're they're really very easy to do. Uh, but the nice thing is is that that can also be completely private uh, with uh, custom post types. If you set custom post types to, to non-public or exclude from search, they're not visible to the front end. But you can make any content you want display on a page, and that page you can protect with restrict content pro or members or any of the other stuff like that. So I use that a lot for, uh, I used to use pods for my uh, CRM. I would use a form on the front end when someone contacted me as a lead. They would like fill out a form, and it would automatically come into my system as a client, as a request, as a, lead, as a brand new lead. And then I would do all my lead work on the back end. They'd never see it. But that's kind of, you know, I would use the comments in WordPress to track my back and forth communications with them or any notes, that kind of stuff. I could link it to projects and tasks. So if, so if there's a user on the front end using, say, that staff page or whatever, and they're inputting something that's just mm -hmm. a sort of input field, yeah. are we able to take 
whatever infos through that info and attach it to that individual. Yeah. So then you can kind well, of. Well, because WordPress automatically, when they're creating a post, you have the post author. If you turn the post author on, that is connected to the person who's currently logged in. So if they create that post, that become they become the post author for it, and that gives you an immediate connection that you can use to the user's database and stuff like that. Because all you have to do is connect post author .id or post author, which is the ID of the user eight who has been. So. so I'd be able to recall all that info just with the, the author ID. Yeah, exactly. So if you look up servers, like uh, like you can do a five star. A rating system, and mm -hmm. be able to like recall all that. Usually, with individual. rating systems, you typically want to because they're not always logged in. Usually, with rating systems, they're usually common. When someone comes in and they do like a five star mm -hmm. and stuff like that, that's usually uh, using the comments in WordPress. But you can do that also through pods. So, yeah, yeah. Is there any costs associated with the pod service? No, pods is free. Yeah, we'll show that in a screen in a few. <laughs> Pods is a free plugin with free support. Yeah. So, so there's a lot involved in setting that up, especially for somebody that's not a WordPress developer like myself, I'm yeah. a business owner. Yeah. So I'm assuming you've got like the tools on your website or something. We do have a couple there. Most of them are like this, which is like you're. It's understood that you should have at least a bare minimum understanding of WordPress to work in this kind of stuff. You don't have to know PHP though. You really don't. Uh, and that's kind of where we've kind of like help people out. There's a lot of folks that are out there building WordPress with Elementor. Uh, Elementor Pro has a connection to Pods. Uh, it doesn't handle our relationship fields, but the nice thing is about all of these little builders, these you know website builders like Elementor and Beaver Builder, all of them, as long as you're on the post itself, and like whichever kind of post that is, and you type the Pod short code, it's going to recognize the ID of the post you're currently in and the post type and pull in the right field if you pop it out there. And that's what most people do, is they honestly go, they've created a layout for all uh, services in Elementor. They call it a theme layout, I think is what they what Elementor calls it. They go in their theme builder, and they create a, a, uh, a Elementor page for services, and then they have a dynamic field connection. But if they can't see our fields, you just pop in a short code, and it's done. And that's how most of those work. What you mentioned uh, about after building the framework, going back and making it look pretty. Yeah, with, with um, CSS that typically. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's how most people do it. Uh, there's another thing too, is like you can design an entire page in Elementor or one of those other builders like that, and make it look exact, kind of like uh, prototype it up the way you might want it to look, and say like, here's an example of what I want. Of like a staff grid with like you know a good picture with a title and caption everything else like that. You take that, you look at the HTML for it, cut and paste it, drop it into the into the template, and then just go in and replace your merge fields and recognize that whatever that goes through that particular template, it's only going through once for each person. Make sense? So, and uh, we're doing another talk in about two weeks over in St. Pete. And it's called Build Anything with Pods. And I'm going to be going into a lot of detail of stuff like that, of how to easily create little content areas on your site, easily create little databases on your site that you can push and drop content wherever you need it to be. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Anybody else up there? Yes, Alfonso. If you're doing something for... Um, uh, a lay person to go and to update, mm -hmm. they really don't understand anything. Can you make the interface to update like the services? Well, place? you just saw it. It's like WordPress. You give them the WordPress <coughs> input screen, you hide everything else. There's nothing they don't if they're going as an editor or a author, mm -hmm. they're not gonna see any other part of WordPress but that post type that you've given them access to. So like if they're used to going into posts and creating blog posts or they're used to going into their about page and editing that about page, that's what they're getting for the staff and services. They're getting the exact same screen. So they're already used to it. They're used to using that featured image. They're used to filling out that content. And they're not going to go into pods at all? No, they'll never go into pods. There's no reason for them to. They'll go into the actual post type that says staff or services or what have you. And you can turn off the editor. Like I, I do that a lot. I turn off the editor because I don't need it. I just give them the name, the title name, and the, like the fields underneath it, and then they go in and fill out those things, and they're done. 
Thanks. Real easy. I like almost every single site I've ever done for a client. I add pods on. I usually do a frequently asked questions, a staff list, and then I'll do like a custom settings page where I track where I have them put in their address and their phone number, and then I also give them a place to track their hours, their business hours, and I populate all that with pods on the front end. And they don't ever touch the things that make the design work. What about this new Gutenberg? Uh, eh, we're not talking about Gutenberg. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, we work with Gutenberg. We do. I mean, if you turn on if you turn on the REST API on the back end of Pods, your input screen will be Gutenberg enabled. But the problem is, is that Gutenberg only affects the editor. It doesn't affect your custom fields or anything else like that. So there's really no reason unless unless they're going to go in and make their biography and make it look like you know pictures here and, and all this kind of stuff. There's no reason for them to have a builder screen or a Gutenberg screen for their staff page or for their staff entry. That's kind of the whole issue I have with a lot of the Gutenberg stuff is that it's never they never they didn't think about custom post types when they created it. That's what I'm, that's what I'm, I'm thinking in the future they'll have blocks that they'll have constraints. what's probably going to end up happening is is that you'll go to uh, the staff page and you'll get a block that's pre-input screened for that and it will look just like it's going to look when it pops up on the front end. They'll also be able to create, and we're going to probably end up doing this as well, uh, we'll probably create some template blocks that allow you to put a staff list into a widget or a staff list into this page or something of that nature. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question? Cool. Anything else? Yes. Elaine. So you're Pods helps create reusable little blocks yes. of content. Well, it helps so you, Pods templates helps you create reusable little blocks of content. The content itself is what you're creating with Pods. Yeah, you're managing the content with Pods. The templates allow you to create little blocks of content that can be output in different ways. And how would you do an FAQ? Oh, it's easy. It's like the easiest one possible because of frequently asked questions. All it is is a question and an answer. So the title becomes the question and the editor becomes the answer. And you're done. Yeah. That's a pods type or what? You create a post you create a pod custom post type called FAQ, frequently asked question. Okay. And the title becomes the question and the body or the editor becomes the answer. Where you throw a class in so you can style it? Um, you can do that in the template, or you can do that. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do that one. We'll show that one next week, or not next week, the week after next. If there weren't any more questions, where can you get help with pods? Uh, you can go to our Slack chat at support.pods.io slash chat. Uh, actually, the support.pods.io also lists all of our plugins, where to download them, where our GitHub is, where our docs are, everything. So it's quite helpful. Um, the chat is all week long. I sit on there all the time. If you ask a question, I will more than likely get to you within like an hour, if not sooner. That's, uh, I am on there all the time and people love it. We also have a forum on WordPress.org and I also respond to those like once a week, but I often pop in during the week and answer those as well. Uh, we have a YouTube channel at youtube.com pods framework and we have several videos on there as well. Okay. Pods is a free plugin with free support. We believe that price shouldn't be an obstacle in getting you started building powerful data driven websites. That's why pods is free. But just because we're free doesn't mean we're not valuable. If you find value from the websites you build with pods, please consider giving back to the project by joining Friends of Pods. And you can find out more about it at friends.pods.io. Friends of Pods is our donation system. Uh, we have basically, you can join at any level you want. You can uh, make it monthly. You can make a one-time donation. You can say a thank you and send me five bucks for coffee. Whatever you want to do, it's fine. Um, we have some people that pay a lot of money. We also have a lot of different hosting companies and plug-in companies that do uh, have partnered with us to provide benefits to you guys. So if you donate a certain level, we can give you perks back. We can give you discount codes on certain uh, hosting companies and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And we recognize you. There's a great page on there that tells you how to, uh, you know, tells what you gave and stuff like that. So. All right. Thank you.